calculus should be extended the calculus for the classical smooth functions. So, weight distribution just one word because nowadays uh, people uh, look for generalizations of uh, old things. So, in particular, uh, the configurations or physical laws allow some singular objects to come into their study. So, if you are uh, if you know just the classical calculus, it's not good enough to treat the singular objects. So we need to go beyond the singular, uh, beyond the regular functions. So that is the main motivation, and uh, this is needed even to formulate the well-known physical laws. So um, that is the word of motivation. So let me begin some uh, introducing some uh, some more notation. So this is, these are the usual derivatives with respect to this variable x in omega. So this is a iterated uh, derivatives like that. Alpha is this multi-integer. So they are all uh, integers and uh, non-negative. And uh, mod alpha is the total order of this operation. Uh, alpha 1 here. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, there is this space um, B K omega. So first we have to introduce these spaces. So these are called the test function spaces. So the classical notion has to be extended. Okay, classical notion of function is uh, defined the pointwise, and so uh, here uh, they are going to be uh, understood. Even if there is a pointwise description, we have to understand them in terms of averages. So this is a nice way of uh, uh, taking their averages. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what is the k? K is a uh, relatively compact open set like that. So you have a omega like this and then k is a relatively compact open set, uh, relatively compact subset of omega. omega. So that means it is uh, well away from the boundary. Okay. So this distance is positive. So given that, so what is the dk of omega? This consists of all functions which are uh, C infinity of omega. So these are all classical functions admitting as many derivatives as you want and support of E is contained in K. So what is the support of E? Support of E is the set in which uh, it lives. It's a closed set, always it's a closed set. So it's a closed set and uh, the closure of uh, the set where it is uh, not zero. And you see that the point wise values are indeed used. And we are in the uh, classical, uh, we are dealing with the classical object, object, so no problem. Okay. Of course, it's sometimes it's omega. Okay. Now, P of omega is going to be union of all, you vary this uh, compact sets, so that means a function can be non-zero here, and then outside it is zero, right, and it is uh, very clear that you, if you find, if you find uh, you know, omega not belonging to this, the support, then p of x is equal to zero. Because all the points where it is not zero is already included in this sub. Okay, so this is the, so in other words, this one is all the smooth functions omega um, such that the support of E is some 
very relatively compact subset of open. So we do not have any control on the support here, whereas in DK of omega, we have a control on the support also. Okay. Now we want to uh, put some topology on this so that topology on test function spaces. So if you take a sequence Pj, let us say in the D k of omega. So support is all fixed. So what is uh, very um, it admits all self derivatives, right? So I want to say, so we say definition Pj converges to zero in the uh, of omega because it's a linear space, so it's enough to define sequences converging to zero if D alpha, the derivative Pj converges to zero uniform for every multi-index alpha. <coughs> so uniform convergence. Okay. Uniform convergence, <coughs> if you take alpha equal to zero, it's a well-known uniform convergence of the uh, functions, but then we demand uniform convergence for all the derivatives, whatever the alpha, uniform convergence. Okay. So this part is, uh, this is the way to take care of the um, uh, convergent um, of uh, existence of all derivatives, infinite uh, derivatives. So now let us go to this uh, D of omega. So I want to say, same thing, definition. As a remark, the difference between this and that space is that there is no control on the support here. So it is natural to require two conditions here. There exists a compact set, a relatively compact set, K with omega, such that support of Pj, they are all contained in a fixed set, compact set like that for all the elements in the sequence. And furthermore, so this is independent of K. So in other words, there is a uniformity for the support, uniformity condition for the support, and then the next one. So all the things, if it is true, then of course uh, it automatically implies that they are all in that. Of omega, right? By and uh, over here we have that earlier definition, and then we demand the alpha pj converge to zero uniform as j goes to so, so this is the definition. Now what are this? Then, for the sake of uh, 
you know, stability, we, we require that it is continuous with respect to some topology. So, the topology here, see the thing is that other things have compact support. So, you will, you will tend to um, demand a uniform convergence. The important thing is that it is not just uniform convergence, there is one extra condition here. So, you have to keep, keep that in mind. <coughs> okay. Uh, linear and V is continuous with respect to about topology. Okay. Now, equivalent condition. Um, so, sometimes uh, this is, uh, uh, so in other words, whenever Pj converges to 0 here, okay, let me write it this way, uh, you should have uh, T, Pj converging to 0. So, these are all uh, scalars, uh, so this uh, is the usual convergence of uh, real sequence. By the way, you can have a uh, you can deal with that. Here I am dealing with the real value functions, real value distribution, but you can uh, uh, very easily uh, deal with the complex. You can replace the uh, reals by complex, no problem. Okay, um, so equivalent condition is the following. Um, so notation is this um, D phi. Right, this is the so this is the real value. So phi is in T omega. So this is called an action. And since it is linear, we will write it this way. Okay. For uh, reasons. Uh,
extra complication. We have to deal with a, a sequence of norms like that. And then uh, for every k, you have to, this inequality is not uniform, it varies with. Okay. Now, uh, some like, immediate examples. First of all, classical functions, even if it is uh, defined uh, point wise, um, uh, can be regarded as distributions. So, if you take any um, locally integrable functions, that means um, they are integrable over every relatively compact set. So, these functions can behave nastily as you approach the boundary. On any um, compact set, it is fine, but when you approach the boundary, they can, this integral can blow. But then, <coughs> does it matter? So, given this, I want to regard this as a distribution. So, uh, associated distribution is the following. So, it is denoted by lambda f. So, upon the definition, I have to give a, a linear action on test function space. So, So define the following rule is very easy. So you take any test function so lambda f p. So you take Lebesgue measure to integrate. Okay. So this is the, in other words, um, if you are uh, if f is nice, if f is in L2, this is nothing but uh, for us it's only L1 low, but then if f is nice like that, then uh, this is nothing but L2 inner product. And uh, L2 inner product, we, 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 we write it like that. And uh, since we are extending everything from from old setup to the new setup, we adapt the same notation. Okay, so this is a extra, there is extra hypothesis. So, all classical functions, so if you take a, any continuous function, of course it is a, contained in a L1 low omega and therefore um, that function can be regarded as a distribution via this operation. So, we are saying all the pointwise defined objects, they are also generalized objects. So, uh, I leave it to you to check whether, I mean, how it is, uh, how it is, uh, uh, how it defines a distribution. In other words, um, you have to check one of these conditions. Okay. Now, let us see. Mu is a measure. Uh, it can be signed measure. That means it may not be possible. So, in that case, uh, if there is an associated distribution, then the mu, uh, how it is defined? So, let me. So it's an action on the test function is this. You integrate P with respect to that measure. So if uh, this measure, so this is a mark. So if this measure is absolutely continuous with respect to the big measure, then by random recording here, we know that this admits a density. This is random. And in that case, if you look at this expression, 
So that becomes a C F T X coincides with this. So lambda mu is equal to lambda F. So in other words, we get back. Uh, um, so it's very consistent. The way we extend the, we, we regard measures as distribution, the way we regard uh, functions as distribution, they are consistent. There is no contradiction. Okay. Now, some specific example which really motivated and uh, drove uh, the various uh, developments of the theory is the direct distribution. So, people call it Dirac function, but actually it's a Dirac measure or distribution. Measure is a distribution. So, what is that? So, you take a point in omega and the delta gets zero. Delta is zero. That is the Dirac measure. So, what is its action? So, every time we talk about a distribution, immediately you have to ask what is its action on each test function. So it's very simple. You evaluate that function on at that point. show that it's a distribution, I have to estimate this quantity like that. So this is, let me estimate that. And this is less than or equal to super of so you see, only this condition is very natural. Um, so you have uh, evaluation at one point, of obviously it is less than or equal to supremum of phi over the entire domain. And uh, this is like that. So here you see, when k equals to 0 and when ck is 1. So in other words, um, it's a new phenomenon. Nk is independent of k. Whatever be k, see, because uh, no derivative, only evaluation of the function of each. So the conclusion here is uh, one can prove regressively, but then uh, so definition if uh, Nk is independent of k. So in general it depends on the compact set um, which contains the test functions here. It is independent. So if it happens that it is independent of k then um, that is distribution. We are talking about a distribution. T such that this inequality holds is of finite order in omega. Order is less than or equal to that, let's say, it's independent of k, so let me call it n, um, finite order in omega. So we have seen that uh, the order of, uh, for example, order of the delta gets 0 is finite, and in fact it's equal to 0, because, uh, because of this. And uh, similarly, you will check that for these two examples, so order of a function, lambda f, you see, so is for the measure. Because by measure, by very definition of the measure, it is only the supremum norm of phi which comes into the picture, right? This is a, this is a nice occasion to recall uh, these here. 
So, reach theorem identifies measures on, as continuous linear functionals on C0 with respect to the supremum. That's where you get C0. Okay. So, we have seen um, test functions, we have seen what are distributions and some examples. So, the next step, you have to develop uh, calculus operations. So, the next one is, okay, restriction. This is easy. Restriction on open So, I take a, a small omega, any open set, open subset. <coughs> And then I take a t in uh, d prime omega, and then we can define as an element of distribution in that smaller open set. So how do you do? How do you do that? So this is a d prime small omega. This is a d of small omega. Nothing back. Okay, for people in the last row, I do not know I can, my excuses, but uh, the structure of the hall is like that. Huh? So maybe the front uh, people should bend uh, yeah. <laughs> so that. Okay. Um, that is why I think uh, this uh, uh, projection may be useful, but still there is some red there. Huh? <laughs> okay, so if you have your classical functions, you can restrict that on any subset. If uh, f is a nice function, c infinity function, you can talk about f of x is 0 at any x is 0. Such a thing is not possible to the distribution. You must, you can only restrict, given an arbitrary distribution, you can only restrict, restrict it only on open subsets of okay, in general. And this is the way. So you take any v in uh, d small omega, of course, if, uh, um, if it, it is a C infinity function with a compact support inside omega, so we are like that. So it, it lives inside here. And you extend it outside by zero without uh, spoiling its uh, regularity, neither its support, everything remains same. So this object makes sense. So this is definition. Okay, next. So the, the, the t restricted to small omega is a distribution on small omega that you have to verify. So there are two conditions here, equivalent conditions. So you have to verify one of them. Okay, so I leave it to you. Then multiplication by smooth function. Smooth flush is the uh, same thing. It may vary, but uh, in that case, we, I have to specify what the smoothness is. So let me take a nice function and uh, yeah, arbitrary distribution. Then we can define psi t as a distribution. We cannot go for better than that because if you take psi equal to 1, you will get a t. So you cannot do better than this. So how it is defined? So psi t, t. So I have to specify the action, and that is simply you do a this. So this is a multiplication operation. And so you can do this. So if you if you look at that example, I am looking at uh, not phi, psi phi. So if you put in here psi phi, the psi you can take it along with f. In that case, you get this object psi than f. So it is very consistent with uh, our earlier. Uh, identification of uh, 
classical object as generalized objects. Okay, very good. And uh, this one, whenever phi has compact support, this product, you have to note that it is in T omega. Because it's a product. If one of them vanishes, the other in the product vanishes. Now, next comes the most important of all operations, the derivation. Derivation. So, T is given and then some alpha. So, I want to define what is whatever be the multi index. So, we will see that all distributions they are all C infinity functions. Okay? Because we can take a C infinity function, this is C infinity and they are smooth. The object is uh, the distribution. So it is simply this. Side is also a distribution, left hand side is also a distribution, and if you want to 
say that the both of them are equal, then you have to prove that uh, the action of left hand side on any arbitrary chess function is equal to action of uh, the right hand side on the same chess uh, same function. Okay, so that is the game. Now, support of a distribution. Uh, as uh, the remark goes, I mean, uh, if, uh, if uh, D is given by a smooth function, according to that definition, which I just erased, then of course uh, the, the object cell D is the usual pointwise, uh, pointwise defined uh, uh, function, smooth function. So it is a distribution. So there is a perfect consistency between uh, this multiplication and the pointwise uh, multiplication of classical objects. The only thing is that um, the so in other words, the model of here is that the classical operations can be extended in this general setup, but of course uh, you cannot uh, because of the lack of regularity. You cannot uh, um, define um, in that as a smooth function. That you cannot do as a smooth object. But as a distribution like this with some condition, you can define the new operation. So if you have just a distribution, not a classical thing, then you have to choose psi in C infinity. There is no, no way out. But if you know, for instance, uh, T equal to lambda f. So this is a mark. If you know this with the area of pay, let us say C naught omega, then psi t is a distribution corresponding to this point. Okay. <coughs> so there is a perfect consistency. Now next, uh, support of the distribution. <coughs> okay, so I want to, it should be a closed set. So that is your uh, sum. So 
there may be several etc. So you collect all those things, you go over here and take the complex to get the sum. This is exactly what we did at core functions. Now you can check the support of uh, delta x0. You did not go over there. So you see that point. Outside, it is in. And it is uh, very clear from that definition. Okay. Now, similarly, I have to introduce another notion singular sum. This is an important notion, and uh, this will be refined in uh, perhaps uh, not today, maybe tomorrow. This notion will be refined by uh, speakers here, and that is an important object which will be uh, needed in order to solve certain inverse problems. Okay, what is singular sum? So same thing, I have to do the same. So collect all open subsets, small omega, such that now I have to look at the restriction there. So this is C infinity of omega. This is a distribution in uh, small omega. That distribution I require to be given by a C infinity function. So, in other words, um, there must be a C infinity function here such that you look at the lambda f be equal to t in omega. Small. So, this is the result. So, um, um, this is what is meant by this. T restricted to omega should be given by a function, so that function, with the definition of a distribution being given by a function, L1 log function. But that L1 log function should be C infinity of omega. That's the definition. So in other words, I collect all the open subsets where T does not have any singularity. No singularities. And then I do the same thing. So definition. So this is this union is an open set, and so this is closed. So this is the largest open set, omega double prime, it's the largest open set on which uh, T is uh, C infinity and, and uh, complete. This is the smallest closed set which contains all the C infinity singularities of T. Okay.
the difference between the earlier uh, test function class and this one is that uh, the compact support is missing. Compact support is missing. <laughs> so you take a sequence. So we say in J under it is zero e omega. So we have to just to take care of all, all the derivatives, convergence of all the derivatives in the uniform norm, the sub norm. But at the same time, supports can vary. So what do we do? So um, we say, okay, if g alpha in j equal to zero, uniformly on compact substance. This is an edge and for your brain. Multi-index up. So that's it. Because uh, we do not have any control on the uh, support. So we have to, at the same time, we have to take care of existence of all the elements. So this is the rule. So what happens near the boundary it can be pretty nasty, right? Because we are in C infinity omega. No good behavior is guaranteed near the boundary of omega. And that is why we restrict the uniform convergence on compact substance. Okay, so whenever you have a, a classical function space and whenever you put a topology on that, I can talk about the doing. E prime of omega is the dual of E omega uh, with respect to the about the part. Now what is important here is that proposition. This is uh, something uh, so this is can be identified with all distributions, the old d omega and the old topology, such that support of T is compact. Okay, support I just define that, and I, I want that to be compact. So you take compactly supported distributions on omega, they are all uh, continuous on uh, E omega. So just to remark here, first of all, if uh, a test function has compact support C infinity, of course uh, it is contained in here. So, so if you take a, a continuous linear form over here on E omega, of course by restriction it defines uh, a continuous linear functional. So this is continuous. In other words, if a sequence converges over here, of course it converges over here. Because in fact there is no condition on the support. So any continuous linear functional by restriction will define a continuous linear functional over there. So we have this inclusion also. So all the objects here are distribution. But then it's a subspace. So what is the condition which characterizes this subspace? So all uh, compactly supported distributions can be regarded as a separate dual space. And what is that dual space? E omega and the topology over there. Okay, next. So compactly supported distribution. Next is temporal distribution. I think. Uh, Temporal distribution. So, what is a temporal distribution? Yes. Now, temporal distribution, as the name suggests, is some temporal behavior, but then that temporal behavior is at infinity. At infinity. So, omega equal to r. Okay. So, psi, psi, is psi, yes, um, yes of rn. This is what I have to define. Okay. So what is this? So psi belongs to 
along with this, it's an only f. Okay? Psi, first of all, is C infinity function on R. So, in particular, you can have y to grow that infinity. No, I don't want that because I want to make it tougher. So, what do you mean by tougher? So, you take any polynomial, any polynomial, you take any derivative, okay? Take the supremum norm, this should be fixed. For every multi index alpha, alpha, alpha beta, So, what does it mean? So, let us say alpha equal to 0. Alpha equal to 0. So, all derivatives exist, of course, because they are C infinity functions. So, point wise exist and they must be bounded in R. R is unbounded. So, this is a non trivial restriction on a side. But then, this is not R. I want, I, I am multiplying this derivative by polynomial. Polynomials blow up at infinity. So the polynomial grows, of course. And uh, this uh, object should decay at infinity such that you multiply by any polynomial which blows up should remain bounded. So it is a non trivial thing. So the obvious example psi of x in one dimension exponential minus x squared. So the idea being that. With the exponential, you can dominate any polynomial growth with the negative power. So, this is in S of R. You put a noun there, uh, Gaussian, the so called the Gaussian distribution, which uh, like that, you know, uh, it uh, rapidly goes to zero at infinity. What do you mean by rapidly going to rapid decay? Is precisely this. So, this condition is sometimes called rapid decay condition. Uh, technically, uh, the function dk is uh, so fast at infinity that you multiply by any polynomial, the, the thing remains bounded. Or uh, since it, it's a requirement for any polynomial, it should go to zero, right? Not only here. Now, the important thing is that the sub -arm, D of R as before. It's containing S of R. Because uh, this have compact circle. Elements here have compact circle. That means they are identically zero in a neighborhood of infinity. So like this R like that. So these are all the functions in D of R. Whereas the function in the yes of R is like that. May not be zero, but uh, it decays. So if it uh, actually zero, of course uh, it decays, whatever uh, polynomial you take. So you have this intuition. So as before, we have a situation like that. Now if I put a suitable topology such that this is continuous, then I have a, by the same argument, I will have a, an inclusion between their duets. That's the idea. So, what's the topology on that? Yes. So, we say um, sign j going to 0 in uh, x power alpha rho beta psi j converges to 0 in a uniformly in a rm as j goes to and uh, this should be true for every multi integers alpha and this is the natural requirement given the, uh, the definition of that space. 
and here uniformly over here, no compact support. Huh? Here there is compact support because at the boundary it can uh, behave nastily, whereas at the boundary in the infinity it behaves nicely. Okay. So, uh, okay. So with that property, I have this inclusion. This is continuous, dense, and uh, like that. So this is the class. So psi prime is dual of psi, sorry, dual of yes, my not my okay. With respect to the above property. And uh, these are called uh, temporal distribution. Yes, prime is the class called the temporal distribution. It's already named. So if you take, uh, for instance, exponential x squared plus, not minus, plus x squared. This, of course, uh, is a new and low function. And therefore, it's a distribution now. But then it has is blowing up at infinity exponential rate. So it cannot define uh, your temporal <coughs> So this inclusion is strict. It's a strict inclusion. There are objects like that. Okay. Now, why this class a temporal distribution was introduced? It's, uh, it has several nice properties, so I list some of them here. Okay, so if you take yes. extend this uh, thing to generalized objects. Um, so um, in general, of course, the object must be defined all over Rn. There it is. And uh, uh, since it involves integral and the behavior at infinity, you cannot hope to define uh, this Fourier transform for all objects, generalized objects, and be uh, with this some nice behavior at uh, infinity, you need the temporal distribution. So, uh, the 
here in Mr. Fall. Okay. First of all, the uh, Fourier transform is an isomorphism. On two, so one one on two, so and continuous, so the isomorphism between yes, okay, yes keys. Now I can do it as this, so the ideas are all. So uh, take care, tempered S prime, and S prime is the space of all tempered. Now define. We had as an element of uh, the space by when I said do it. So yes, prime, yes. Okay, that's the definition. So in other words, uh, just like uh, integration by parts, we had derivative here, we pushed over the function space. Same thing, you push uh, the Fourier transform over k. Of course, this operation is, uh, is consistent with the, the relation we know for functions. Because this is just uh, the dual, duality taking adjoint of uh, this map. So, uh, here, S prime to S prime, um, T going to T prime is isomorphism. this function you have uh, this 
So whenever you have classical function, the Fourier transform is smooth. Smooth function, uh, that means it is C, D, D, in R, and so on. So now, much more is true because we have compact support, uh, not just yes, compact support. So you can have a more of that. So first of all, the uh, three hat is defined over for complex numbers. The hat is defined over complex numbers. So V, so how it is defined? Five words. Same. I am taking this definition. In fact, this definition here, Fourier transform, is somewhat uh, strange because we are so much used to this definition. Now, it is this definition which is uh, adopted here uh, because uh, this is a pointwise uh, definition and this is a pointwise object. So, everything is done. And here, is that is that any complex. So with respect to x, this is c infinity, and uh, this is a uh, nice function. So the the fact that it is uh, 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 any growth here, exponential growth, is uh, compensated by compact supportedness of phi. So this uh, uh, action is only on the support of phi. So we do not care what happens at uh, infinity. So you can prove that. This definition. Um, this is the entire function. And not only that, um, we have So this is 
E prime. E. Of course, just write here. So, the Fourier transform, which is uh, defined, uh, it's a temporal distribution. So, Fourier transform is defined only as a temporal distribution. But, point wise, it is defined because of that condition. Because I have now compact support, so I can talk about the duality like that. So, that's the definition. And you have, yeah, T hat Z is entire. functions whenever it is so for instance u and v are L1 functions in Rn you have this well defined as L1 function that's a statement you, you might have seen in your uh, measure theory course extend this to distributions. So, let's say P is in a distribution. Of course, here omega is R. Huh? Yes. Because the uh, object is defined like that. And then, P is D of R. And, P star P in fact, it is pointless. I want to do 
is replaced by simple uh, yeah, distribution. V is a smooth function and uh, what it is. So the integral is a duality that. So I have u there for t. And then there I have uh, this kind of uh, problem. I will explain what it is. So first of all, I, I define so solubility in d of r. So what is uh, b just? This is just the reflection of b at the zero. So that is, and then this one is a translation. So this is a reflection. There is translation. The way it is defined, translation of a function. So there are two operations here. First, the reflection followed by um, a, a, a translation by amount at x. And this is true for every x in R. Now, why this definition is philosophical? It's exactly that which is seen. Uh, the, the function b is uh, reflected first and then translated. So this is the trend. And then if you if you are taking u in let's say d prime rm, um, v in uh, e prime, that means uh, this is compact zone. You have identified the space with the compact zone. Then we can define u star v as a distance. So 
there are always there is a uh, so if you have u in uh, in uh, in uh, s prime and uh, in that case you are you are having a special distribution in the temporal distribution in that case you can relax this condition you need not have a compact support and then again this is So this kind of uh, compensatory phenomenon is very, very common in the area of this motion. If uh, one of them behaves better, you can uh, take uh, more plus bigger plus. Okay. Now last thing is regularization, um, approximation by regularization. Yeah. 
epsilon goes to zero, you see that uh, delta zero is a fractionator. So the important property is the following. Given a u t in a d prime r n, you can define t epsilon d star rho epsilon. Rho epsilon are of course uh, for each epsilon it is uh, a function with a compact subject. Smooth function with a compact subject. Smooth because the rho is smooth and with a compact subject. It is just a risque. <laughs> so this is uh, according to our uh, the third one. Uh, this is the uh, same thing. Yeah. Okay. There is uh, one more property we include here. Five. Um, support of p star. Yes. We have two distribution. Is contained in support of. D press support of yes. So um, the support of uh, the convolution is spreading, is spreading, and uh, how it is spreading in an algebraic way? Vector sum of two sets. Both the sets are closed sets in R n, so you can add the vectors in each set. Okay. Now uh, because of that, so this is a scene three. What is happening is that um, this one, yeah, rho epsilon converges to delta in the sense of distribution, in the space of distribution. And uh, star is a continuous operation, so T star rho epsilon converges to T in the sense of distribution. So, in other words, and these are compact circles, so it's always well defined. Um, we are able to approximate any arbitrary distribution by C infinity function. But the, the convergence happens in, uh, because this object is very similar, it happens only in the distribution. So I have to say what is the convergence in the, in the uh, space of a distribution, more generally in uh, omega. So if you are given a Tj, a sequence of distribution, so again, we say Tj converges to 0 and we write only semi arrow because uh, this is a uh, kind of weak convergence. If and only if its action on any test function converges to 0. So, we will see, we will see. so in other words, this is just a point wise convergence. Point -wise convergence. And, uh, uh, the regularization of uh, distribution by smooth functions is always guaranteed in this in this uh, with respect to this curve. And uh, how do you achieve that? You achieve uh, uh, using this. Uh, uh, these are called modifiers. modifiers. So you construct the modifier and then you convert with the modifiers. You get that. The picture is precisely this. So whenever you have a similar point around that, this convolution smoothens that object. Okay, I think uh, uh, with a big acceleration, I have covered uh, all possible things. I hope uh, something has gone. In, okay, <laughs> I wish you good luck. See you tomorrow.